Hey everyone, today just doing a quick video for you of how to mix paints and create a flip cup. One of the very simple introductory ways of creating with fluid art. This is one that does a range of things that uh, can be very unpredictable at times, but it's definitely fun. And uh, I'm going to go through how I mix my paints, what I use, just as some ideas for you and uh, things that you can have a go of at home if you wish. So, to get started, I'm using one of my party trays. I've lined it with a piece of paper, um, just so I can catch some of the excess drips. And I'm going to be creating on one of my acrylic discs. The size of this, for reference, is a little bit smaller than an 8x12 canvas. Um, but the amount of paint I end up using is around about the same for this as I would for a canvas. So, let's get started. My first thing, is to add a few pins in the back so I can lift it up above the paint because I don't want the drips to be happening. There we are. I know my table's even, I don't need to measure it or to level it out, but you can if you wish. My suggestions for most people for their first ones is go with white and two colors. Today I'm going to be using turquoise, uh, Montmartre brand, and the lemon yellow, also Montmartre brand. So to start with, just gonna grab a cup, stirring stick, and half a dozen cups of the wipe to get us going. So you can see I've got the white in there. I'm reusing using cups here. I'm not too worried about it being a clean cup at this point, but I will be using a clean cup when I go to do my pour. I'm using Flow Medium, also by Montmartre, and I use roughly the same amount of medium as what I have as paint. As I mix it up, what I'm aiming for to start with is just a very smooth consistency, sort of like sour cream. So that's very thick, but that's my consistency there. It's nice and smooth. I'm gonna add a little bit more medium to help it to flow a bit better. And once I've got it a little bit thinner, then I'm gonna add some water to it as well. In most cases, I wouldn't suggest water for something that you're going to be storing, but I'm going to be using this paint straight away. I'm not storing it for later use. So adding water is all good. Um, people might prefer distilled water. People might prefer different things. But once you've got the sour cream, once you've got it to a thickness that is smooth and works well to good with each other, then what you're after is basically liquid honey. I'm not there yet. A little bit more water. Um, there are so many options as to how to mix it up but I'm just showing you one of the ways that I do, and you can have a go at this yourself. Um, I highly recommend using some sort of medium, mostly because it helps the acrylic paint to stick to itself better. Oh, that's nice. See how it's running off the stick? That's good, I'm happy with that. Gonna grab the next color. Um, so you use the medium so that you don't destroy the paint, as it were, and make it all fall apart. When you get into using um, water by itself, because of the molecules in the paint, you can actually cause it to not hold together very well, and it can create issues. The paint had just dried up on the end there a little bit, as you probably saw, so I fixed that up. All good. So, again, half a dozen squirts, adding in my medium, roughly the same amount of medium as what I've got in the amount of paint that's in the cup, and stir it till it's smooth. So with longevity, you are better off using medium. Depending on what I'm creating, sometimes I will just use medium and paint. I won't add any water at all. Um, you can, as I said before, do just water, but it can risk the paint falling apart and breaking apart and not being quite as nice. So that's nice and smooth. I've got like a paste, like a cream, like a, um, like a sour cream. Uh, so hard to describe this, but anyway, you're getting the idea. Alrighty, added water, getting that nice and mixed and uh, making it nice and smooth. And it's a little bit too runny, but you know what? I'm gonna play with it anyway. Let's see what it does. All right, my third color for today, or third cup, I'm going with the lemon yellow. And excellent, I got myself, hooray! Yes, yes, that means you're an artist when the paint gets on you. This is such a messy type of painting, but it's also a lot of fun. All right. I'm just going to 
clean that up a little bit. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Ah well. If you want to use a um, using a apron is a good idea, but uh, eh, I can't be fast. I end up with stuff all over me anyway. And I have a few shirts now that really are painting shirts, and this is just added to the collection. All right, so got my paint in there, adding in my medium, and mixing that up. If you want to, in order to get less air bubbles in there, you can mix your paint ahead of when you're going to use it. Uh, suggestion generally is around about an hour. Um, it depends if you're adding additives to it, it depends on what you're doing. Again, nice and creamy. Um, add my water, mix that up. So I'm doing this really as a method of play, but because I'm using the same brand medium as the paint, it actually works together really well. So Montmartre is the brand that I'm using today and it's available in Australia, don't know about overseas. Um, and I use the big containers, as you saw, um, because I can access those easily. But you can start off with just small tubes. It really doesn't matter, it's up to you. All right, let's have a look. Okay, that's a bit thick. Add a little more water into that. And because my blue is a bit thinner, I'll be getting some interesting in, in, interactions from it, or turquoise, I should say. And I think that's, yeah, I'm happy with that. So I've got my three colours, and I'll be putting them into a pouring cup in a second. And then the pouring cup, I like to get a clean cup and go from there. Um, that's just another idea of paints you can use. Really doesn't matter. And if you want to mix your own colours, you mix it first, then add your medium, then your water, making it flow. All right. Now I'm going to make a pouring cup. So I have a new cup and I'm going to be placing my colours into there a little bit at a time until I get up to around about three quarters of a cup full. So with this size disc, I know that three quarters of a cup will pretty much cover it. Oh, this is going to be fun. Um, and I've tested that a few times. I don't like to have a lot of wastage, so I try and make it just enough paint to cover the disc. Some people don't mind too much. Um, you've probably seen some videos where there's quite a lot of paint that flows all over the sides and everywhere else. And you can turn around and reuse that paint in other ways. So you can dip things into it, you can um, press paints, uh, more paper into it so you can catch it. You can turn it into jewellery, you can turn it into um, book covers, you can use it for scrapbooking. Like there's so many ideas. So any excess that you have, you can end up using in other ways for other projects. Um, and if you've got any left in your cup, which here I really don't, I've used it all pretty much, um, you can then turn around and store that and use that for another time if you want. I've Because I've been doing this a while, I'm generally able to get roughly the right amount of paint with my mix for my piece, depending on what I'm doing. So here we go. Here's my cup, my pouring cup. And I'm going to bring that a bit closer, see if you can see inside there a little bit. It's a little bit interesting. Okay, so this is a flip cup. This is how you can start off with to do just some simple play with paint, see what happens. Put your cup on, flip it, let go. That's it to start with. You give it a minute or so just so that it can settle, so gravity can pull the paint down, so that the paint in the cup can process and get through and be a little bit more useful. Now I'm just going to pull that, that's probably better position, um, so you can see more effectively what I'm up to. When you go to lift your cup, there will be suction because it's created a bit of a suction there. And as you lift, you may want to lift suddenly, you may want to do it gradually, you might want to turn it, you might want to drag it around a little bit. Some people do a bit of a throw effect, really up to you. This is just going to be a gentle lift, simple, easy, just to show you how to start off. Okay, move those out of the way. So, just lifting it up, letting the paint ooze out. Nice! Okay, so once you've got your paint out of your cup, the idea is to tilt it to the edges, try not to lose it off the sides to begin with, so that the paint covers what you're working with. And once I've got it pretty much covered, then I'm going to start running it off the edge. There we go, beautiful. I tilt fairly slowly 
Um, if you tilt quick, you do risk losing the paint fairly quickly, but that's up to you. And then the other challenge is your patterns. So I like this effect and I don't want to lose too much of it. So I'm not going to tilt too much further. And I'm just going to use my finger to drag downwards and keep the pattern going over the edge. That's a bit better. Um, I also really like this here. I don't want to lose too much of that, but I need to get that to the edge. Oop, there we go. Beautiful. See how we're coming off the edge there? We've got our pattern still coming down. Bring that down a little bit further. Beautiful. I do love how the edges turn out as well. And I think I've got all my edges covered. No, I don't. At the top here, I've got a little bit more missing. Pull that down, bring the color around. There we are. Okay, so I think that's pretty. And I'm not gonna do too much more to it because I like how that's come together. You can see I'm running it down slightly as I've tilted it and that's it. I'm stopping. Done. <laughs> eh, I just washed my hands. Okay, if you don't want if you don't want too much mess on your hands, the options are to use gloves. I'm very fortunate I've got a sink right here, so I'm okay with that. Um, if you can see, I will bring it over closer in a minute, but there's little bits of other colour coming up through it. I have not put any additives in this. I don't expect cells to pop. I don't expect it to do much more than just be a beautiful flow. Um, the cup itself is also interesting, and that's got a little bit of excess in it. And the excess I will use in another project. Okay, let's pick this up and have a look. There we go. Now what I do with mine is I actually let them sit. Um, I let them sit for a night first and dry enough that they're movable. And then I let them sit for up to a week. Uh, depends on the climate, depends how much rain there is, depends a lot of things. But I want it to be quite dry and movable when I'm ready to do something more with it. Now, because I've just created that, it is quite drippy, but I am going to lift it up and just pop it here for a second. And let's have a look at what's inside my paper. So there's quite a few drips there that are interesting. I think they're quite fascinating, actually. And those colours are very beachy. I'm going to throw my cup and the extra paint that's in there into the middle of this. And then I'm going to actually press this paper and in doing that, I'll count up with another pattern in those colours, and that I can end up using for jewellery, which is what I usually do with my excess. Popping that down for a second so I can lift this up. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's very cool, actually. There we are. So, in making a flip cup onto one of my acrylic discs, I end up with a rather beachy feel, almost mountainous actually. It feels like terrain. I might come over the top of this later with um, some metallic pens and add a little bit more effect, add a bit more detail. I'll let it sit and I'll have a think about it and what I want to do to finish it. I might just leave it as it is. And this, I will definitely be doing some of this into jewellery. So I reckon that's going to look pretty cool. So there you go, just a starter. This is how you can start with just a simple flip cup and acrylic pouring. Thanks for joining me.